Alright, it is time to continue with some more Alan Wake, but I'm going to be playing the American Nightmare this time around. Because, well, honestly I did promise there was going to be another game, but the original plan was to be Resident Evil 3. But at the same time, if I did that, then that would not make any sense. So I figured American Nightmare would make more sense, because I'd be continuing on with Alan Wake. <clears throat> Anyways that out of my system. Uh, let's, uh, let's begin. Somewhere in Arizona. So I'm assuming he's Mr. Itch then? <laughs> I'll catch you eventually! Maybe. But what are you gonna do then? By then, I'll have had my hands on everything you love. that surrounds the shores of our reality. He has come to fight a decisive battle in Night Springs. Okay, so there's one slight difference is that, uh, unlike before, you can actually just shine the light on them without having to, uh, look down sight. Now, this time, you have no choice but to do that. In another life, the man was a writer. He still practices that art, forging weapons of war out of ideas. But the violent currents that brought him here have scattered the pages. He has written. My name is Alan Wake, and I'm a writer. I didn't become one overnight. Like most writers, I struggled with it. A short story here, an article there. Then I got lucky and spent a year as a staff writer on the Night Springs TV show. It wasn't the great American novel of my fantasies, but it taught me discipline and craft, and the difference between wanting to be a writer and actually writing. Interesting. And believe it or not, that is actually true. 
There is a difference between being a writer and writing. I can somewhat relate to that. The lights of the motel promise safety. The man mm -hmm. senses that the solution to his predicament begins there. Somewhere within the Earth, space itself has been pierced, and from dark depths runs a steady flow of monsters. The man recognizes the hand of his evil double in this. He knows he must put an end to this madness. All paths lead to the same. Like it looks like all paths are the same. significant compared to what he will unleash on Earth given the chance. But I've survived the dark place, and it has taught me things. How to cope, how to stay sane when the world goes crazy. He's two steps ahead of me, but I can find him, and I believe I can stop him. The strands of webbing glistened in the beam of my flashlight, fine, almost ethereal. They were fresh and right in my path. I held my breath and waited, ear straining. Nothing. I moved on, concentrating on the task at hand. Just get what I was looking for, then leave. That's all I keep telling myself. For a moment, I actually thought it might be as simple as that. Then, I heard too many legs skittering across the ground.
to enjoy another cool Arizona night with me, Eddie Rodman, the host with the books. Hey, any of you guys remember Old Gods of Asgard? <laughs> Man, I actually saw them twice back in the 70s. I was just a kid then, but my dad worked at this club, and he'd sneak me in to see bands all the time, you know. Talk about an education. Anyway, great band, couple of great albums, solid fan base, and then they kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Well, now, almost four decades later, they're making a comeback. And let me tell you, these boys have seen a lot of road. There's some serious rock and roll veterans, because they weren't too young even back in the day. Well, now I've got Odin and Tor Anderson, two of the original old gods, in the studio with me, along with their manager, Barry Wheeler. Nice to have you guys here. Oh, hey, great to be here, Eddie. Yeah, hey, hello! Now, boys, let me just come around and say this, all right? Spring chickens, you ain't. I mean, you guys, you make the stones look young. <laughs> You're only as old as you feel. <laughs> Who you calling old? <laughs> now, your last album was 1978, In the Valley of My Shadow. And then you stopped playing <coughs> together after that. Why? And, and what made you do a comeback after all this time? Well, <laughs> it was a sad thing. See, the original bass player for Old Gods, Fat Bob Balder, passed away in... Leukemia! Bob had leukemia, poor bastard. Yeah, after that, we didn't feel like playing no more. Long story short, I ran into these guys up in Washington, and it was obvious to me that they still got it. So I figured, hey, let's make some music, right? They went for it. Now, Barry, you were a literary agent before this, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, and you were very successful. You represented Alan Wake, I believe, who disappeared under mysterious... Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, Hey, I just want to talk about old gods tonight. Is that cool? Can we do that? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Listen, why don't we take a little break, and then later on in the program, we'll hear the new old gods single. Stay tuned, folks. Well, at least Barry landed on his feet. Oh, well, there's a manuscript in there. Might be able to get it later. Hello. Hey, it's you. There. You remember me, right? Emma? Emma Sloan? I think you might have something that belongs to me. Really? Typewritten page? Oh, yeah, that's weird. I, I did find a page like that. I don't even know where it came from. It was all this weird stuff about the oil derrick and a satellite. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Oh, well, I don't know how you knew I had it, but I, I guess it's <coughs> yours. Listen, what's this all about? There are these really creepy guys hanging around the oil derricks. There's something really weird about them. They're dangerous. I'm gonna deal with them. Try to stay out of their sight, okay? And stay in the light. They hate the light. At the oil derrick, the wheel had been jammed in place and turned until the oil gurgled and flowed thick and flammable. The warning lights were blinking at a fast rhythm, bright and steady, powered by the battery. The Kasabian CD was playing in the boombox, all distorted guitars and intense beat. High above, some piece of orbital junk or another collided with the satellite, knocking it radically off course. Trailing debris, it screamed down from the skies at an impossibly steep angle. All that high-tech engineering reduced to nothing more than a bullet that would destroy whatever it hit. Just to be clear, you should know that we haven't actually met before. Sure we have, Mr. Wake. Remember, you stayed at the motel here. No, the guy you're talking about just looks like me, even if he uses my name. He's behind all this trouble. Oh, I thought, um, now that you mention it, I guess your aura looks a lot nicer than his, actually. I'm very sensitive to things like that. Because I smoke more pot than you think. 
There's a bunch of stuff I need to find. The things mentioned on that page? Well, there's a lot of old crap lying around this place. Great, thanks. I think you should be able to find everything, except the satellite, obviously. Are you gonna tell me what this is? I don't think that'd go over too well. Why don't you let me be the judge of that? Fine. The page is a formula for rewriting reality. Either I use it to close a strange portal to a place that isn't in our world, or shadowy serial killer monster things keep pouring out of there. Yeah, you were right the first time. You can think what you want about me, but there's still bad guys around. Be careful. Well, you might be nuts, but I've seen the way they move, the way they look. I'll buy that. They're called Taken. They aren't really human. Not anymore. And they're climbing out of the oil well? What, do they have secret headquarters down there, or...? No, that's just where the point of connection is. It's a hole that leads to... well, it's a really nasty place. That's why I need to close it. And the guy who looks like you opened it, because he was hanging around the oil field before. He gets around, unfortunately. Thanks for helping me. Oh, I wish I thought you were just a nutcase. Actually, I kind of expected you to. Me too. But I feel like this is how it's supposed to go. Isn't that weird? Not really. I get that a lot in my line of work. What do you do anyway? I'm a writer. Obviously. What was that you said about my aura? Oh, I'm very spiritual, you know. I can see auras. But I only use it for healing and helping people. I'm like a wise woman, you know? I give people insight and advice. After I get done smoking, just because I say high. crazy things doesn't mean I believe everything. Don't be like that. Maybe you should take a few crystals with you if you're going out there. It might be dangerous. They soothe your energies and focus your mind. It's fantastic. And they help me take out the bad guys? Oh, well, no, not as such. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm... Or I have some wonderfully potent herbal detox suppositories. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. That was awkward. Hi. The Champion of Light recognizes the page he got from the woman. It is a weapon of his own design, custom engineered to destroy the dark portal. If he recreates the conditions of the page, a great power will be unleashed. Again, huh? I guess it's about time I went full auto. So essentially it's just like the it's just like the original game. In a nutshell. You never had the balls to go for. 
having more fun too. Do you know the real difference between us? I'm not afraid to be the center of attention. This poor slob's just collateral damage, really. I mean, made some information out of him earlier. But this part? This is just for kicks. That was lovely. <clears throat> I know that when I arrive, the clarity of vision I have now may disappear. I've made my plans. I prepared for this, but I know the transition from the dark place will be hard on me. And not just physically. It may affect my mind, my memory, these pages should help me remember and focus. That's worked for me before. Even if that fails, I think I will be able to trust my instincts. I'm navigating my own story. I'm hoping I'll know where to go and what to do, even if the details elude me. One more to go. Some of the Taken aren't protected by the darkness like their comrades. Instead, their aversion to light is so extreme that they literally split into two when they encounter strong light. It leaves the two halves weaker, but of course, their strength in numbers. It's a disturbing development. The dark presence I faced two years ago was powerful, but it didn't have much in the way of imagination. Clearly, the same cannot be said of Mr. we take for granted is softer, <coughs> more adaptable than we think. Under correct conditions, you can reshape it, turn it into almost anything you want. When it happens, almost nobody notices. It's not that we forget, it's that after the change, there's nothing to remember. Only those who have been directly touched by the powers that can shift reality are aware of the changes. Many are driven mad by it, others can cope. I'm one of those people and I know how to wield that power to rewrite reality. The enemy tears itself 
in two to avoid the hated light. It becomes weaker, but more numerous. Such is the arithmetic. Just messed up. To change reality, you nudge it into the right direction. Your version of it is there, waiting. It wants to come true. All you need to do is help it achieve its potential. The devil is in the details. You change the details of the scene to match those on the page. If you get the details right, if you achieve that critical mass, the shift will come, and the rest of your new reality overrides the existing paradigm. The lie, no matter how outrageous, is now the truth. No problem. Here you go. Thanks. Listen, I don't know what's gonna happen exactly when I do this. My memory's a little hazy. I don't even know what that means. All I'm saying is you don't want to come anywhere near the oil field, all right? This thing could get out of hand. In the middle of highly flammable materials. Great. I'll do my best to contain it. Just... Please don't turn out to be some kind of crazy terrorist guy, okay? Okay, I'm gonna go now. Wish me luck. Wait a sec, I want to ask you about something first. What did you mean with that my memory's a little hazy thing? I had a pretty rough time coming here. It was like being caught in a tsunami. I blacked out for a while. It's hard to explain. There's a, a barrier of sorts that I had to break through. I was lucky to make it here with my wits as intact as they are. So, you might have brain damage, you're about to do great things with a magic piece of paper, and you came here from another dimension? No, I'm from New York. I, I was just visiting another dimension. Oh, yeah, okay. My bad. Weird. So that's not happening either. And there really is no way inside, which I'm kind of surprised about. <clears throat>
interesting uh, interior of a convenience store. Well, anyways, I can always come back later. <clears throat> what? You mean to say I can't drive? I can't take any of these vehicles up for a joyride. Well, maybe not right away. We'll see. Then again, it's also a pretty short walk, too, so...
Now can I get inside? <laughs> no, of course not. <clears throat> need you to tell me what you know about it. The guy who looks like me. He... There was a... There was a party in one of the rooms. It, it was pretty wild. I am... Um, I'm not sure which room it was in. You didn't attend. I, no, I wasn't there. But it got way out of hand. Anyway, I... I heard that he went to the diner and there was a fight there or something. Maybe you could find out more from there. I... I, I got some keys that you could maybe use. You just happen to have the keys, huh? Fine. I'll take a look. Stay here. Like hell. I'm getting out of here as soon as you leave so I can close up this place and go home. Emma, you really want to stay here in the light? Yeah, thanks for the advice, but I'm not sticking around. Just go already, okay? Are you okay? I guess. Thanks for the help. Were those the... what do you call them? The Taken? What are they? It's complicated. Short version, the darkness can take people over. That's why I had to destroy the oil derrick. Otherwise, they would have overrun the place. Wow, I didn't think you'd actually do it. I mean, I didn't think it'd work. That's crazy. Let me just try one more time at the risk of sounding like a broken record. It's bad out there. I don't want you hurt. You should stay put. Yeah, while well, you turn this place into an inferno, run around shooting things up and play some kind of weird games with your psycho evil twin. Don't get me wrong, you're, you're nice for a weirdo. I'm impressed as hell by all of this, but enough is enough. I seriously just want to get out of here, okay? On one side of the coin, I don't exactly blame Emma, but on the other hand, I'm going to take some advice. Nope. Okay, so let's go explore the diner. What's more, so she didn't even give me the keys. No, oh well. A poltergeist. Its existence is one of rage and hostility and its very presence turns ordinary objects into deadly projectiles. Oh, shit! of violence, a callous midnight snack, a room key left carelessly behind. The man recognizes the enemy's handiwork. I think these are keys for the motel rooms. Satellite, now this? That place might be involved. Hmm. things, most of which were entirely fallacious. Emma Sloan, an innocent victim of his dark half. More collateral damage in the ongoing war. Damned by forces beyond her control, as much as by her own actions.
damn it. Why didn't you listen? I don't think for Brins and Giggles and Curiosity, I think I am going to take the uh, nail gun. <clears throat> There we go. My own face peered back at me from the TV screen. For a moment, I struggled with the sensation of deja vu. How many times have I seen myself like this now? And then there was that easy grin that never seemed quite as quick or natural on my own lips. The dark, malicious twinkle in the eyes. And I knew who I was looking at. As he pulled back and revealed the room behind him, my throat went dry. There was nothing I could do but watch. Observatory. A slim lead, but solid enough. It stirs something deep in his mind. He knows where to go now. The Observatory. Hot on the heels of the Herald of Darkness, the Champion of Light forges on to see the stars. Observatory, a place for a man to witness the magnificence of the universe. But such insights are not what the Champion of Light is looking for. He has come to find a weapon. Thanks, 
may be a touchy subject, but to be blunt, you really don't sound, uh, well, old. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, the difference between your, your speaking voice and your singing voice, it's pretty striking. What the hell are you talking about? You saying it's not us singing on that record? What? What you ain't talking about? No, 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 I'm not saying that, guys, but I, I can't help noticing the difference. Son, you're on thin ice. You calling me a liar? Whoa. Hey, let me just step in here for a moment, boys. Yeah, and they do sound different, but believe me, we're not talking Milli Vanilli here. These guys are the real deal. Why don't you come to the gig tomorrow night and see for yourself? Once they get on that stage, boom, things get real. Really? Believe me, they play like they're possessed. It's almost like magic. Look, you see my boys play, you see the old gods for real. These guys project a lot of power. They're not lightweights, you know what I'm saying? All right, Barry, I'll, I'll see if I can make it. Now, let's take another quick break here, and after that, we'll play the new Old Gods of Asgard single. Don't you go away. See if there's anything out of the ordinary. <laughs> that rhymed. I've seen the enemy, and it's me. I faced dark horrors before, things that live in the unimaginable pressures of the world beyond our own. Sometimes they masquerade as humans. That's what ultimately lurks inside Mr. Scourge. He's every mean-spirited tabloid story about me. An evil caricature, a creature formed in that vague territory of misconceptions, half-truths, and the dark imagination of people who heard a story about me. An urban legend made flesh. A serial killer. My dark half. Brought to life by the power of Cauldron Lake. Trips later. So, what do I have currently right now? Boy, there's a lot here. I only have, I'm only up to ten, so yeah. Just gotta find a few more. <clears throat> I guess.
The pressure of success got to me. My wife Alice was the sole thing in my life that anchored me. Suddenly it wasn't enough. I couldn't write anymore. I distracted myself with wild parties and whatever trouble I could scare up. I wallowed in the drama of my life, sure that Alice would stick with me even though she didn't sign up to be the lifeline of a tortured artist. It was my dumb luck she's not the type to give up. I've carried a flashlight and a gun for so long that I feel naked without either. It's all too often that I need them. The darkness protects the taken. Shadows crawl over their forms like living things, protecting them from harm. Blows that would injure or kill a human outright mean nothing to them as long as the darkness persists. But light makes them vulnerable. Light burns the shadows away. The darkness that drives them is still in them, but now they're vulnerable. Flashlight and gun. Sometimes it feels they're all I have left. Here and try out the nail gun now that I have it. Spiders aren't really the work of the enemy. They're a side effect, a part of the dark place's less significant fauna that has managed to slip through the opening I made when I arrived. Less an animal than an idea that has assumed the form of an animal. Makes them no less dangerous, but at least they're a little easier to deal with. The darkness doesn't protect them like the Taken, and thus they can be destroyed by either light or bullets right away. So I think I'm up to what, 12 now? I'm up to 13, I'm only missing two. Good morning, I can unlock that weapon. Whatever it is. As a storyteller, my first real love was crime. And it was in that genre that I finished my first novel, starring the perpetually miserable Alex Casey, whose entire life was a wound that never healed. The books sold as fast as they hit the shelves. I wrote five more Alex Casey books, and they all were bestsellers. I became rich. I became famous. Success brought pressure, and I didn't handle it very well.
interesting. I didn't really think a nail gun could do that much damage. Whatever. Let's just go inside. Enough of being around the bush. Y'all, good luck with that one. to Rachel Meadows and wait a moment it's you I can't believe you dare show your face around here again It wasn't me. I just look like him. Are you serious? That's what you're going with? Please! I'm trying to stop him. You saw those shadow things trying to kill me, right? I bet he got along with them just fine. Yes. Yes, he did. All right. Come on in. Thank you. guys are getting out of control. Look, I feel like we're both victims of circumstance here. And maybe we could make some kind of effort to...
just a moment, I'll send the lift down to you. I didn't expect to see anyone here tonight, but I'm relieved to see an actual person. That's assuming this isn't some kind of cruel trick on your part, of course. Doctor, the man who looked like me, what did he want here? There's a strange astronomical event happening right now. Something I can't begin to classify, but I think it's disabled our satellite. There's a very peculiar signal that we're receiving. A signal? That's what I'm here for. Well, so was he. But he didn't seem to understand it at all. He got very angry, sabotaged our imaging array, and now we're blind. I believe the event is still going on, but we can't pick it up. Is there something we can do? What he broke is essentially just a special camera, but we can't use the telescope without it. There's a replacement in my car. If you can get that to me, we're back in business. Consider it done. Tell me more about the signal. It's almost as if something's being transmitted to Night Springs. It's the strangest thing. It's quite elusive, almost as if it wasn't properly there. I don't know how to describe it. So, what was the signal like? I wish I knew. He appeared before I had a good fix on it. He was very pleasant when I was working, but when I isolated the signal, he suddenly forced me out of the control booth. He said it was none of my business. He seemed to... to change. Somehow, he... He was very smooth and charming before that, but suddenly he became... I'm sorry. I'm not sure I want to talk about it. I have to ask, do you always wear that to work? I was at a party for a local art exhibition. Fascinating works when I was called away by my assistant. Michael was the first to spot this event. I don't know where he is now, actually. He was supposed to bring us some food, but he never showed up. Tell me about the event. Oh, it's quite fascinating. It looks as if stars were changing, somehow, or shifting positions. It isn't really happening, of course. Most likely, it was <coughs> some kind of atmospheric refraction phenomenon, but I've never seen anything like it. Did he hurt you? No. He didn't quite threaten me exactly, but those shadowy things started to crawl into view, and whatever the signal was, he seemed to be extremely frustrated by it. He just started breaking things and left. I thought it best not to interfere. You were lucky. He's done much worse. Yes. He showed me a knife, and he kept talking. He enjoyed the sound of his own voice. A proper maniac. You really aren't anything like him, are you? Believe me. I try very hard not to be. It's a very expensive part, and we don't have a replacement. Oh dear, that sounded more callous than I intended. Ah, uh, be safe.
just for the record, there are spiders that actually that can get that big. But they're mostly like bird eating spiders. And maybe a few species of tarantula as well. automated coolant system. Somebody just interrupted the flow. So now what? Well, you could go and open the secondary coolant flow valves manually. I know it's dangerous there, but, well... You got it! Please come talk to me if you have questions. Something I should know about this coolant thing? Oh no, it's quite straightforward. The telescope is very heavy, and moving it generates a lot of heat. So do all of the electronics. Overheating could cause damage, so it shuts down automatically if the coolant fluid isn't flowing. And hot electronics generate instrument noise, which we want to eliminate as much as possible. What is this coolant anyway? Is it dangerous? We use liquid nitrogen. It's quite safe. If I can make it to the valves in one piece. Yes, there is that. Good luck. I'm assuming you didn't have this kind of trouble using the telescope earlier, when my double was here. No, it went very smoothly. Until he turned into a nutter. This doppelganger of yours doesn't seem to want anyone else to look at this phenomenon. Honestly, it seems a little pointless to me. There are many eyes on the sky. I'm not sure what we're gonna get once this thing is working again, but I have a hunch. I doubt it has anything to do with outer space, or that anyone else can see it. I think it's a message for me. You? That seems unlikely. And even if it were a very localized phenomenon, surely it's visible to others in the area. Maybe. But I wouldn't bet on it. There's a reason he came here, and a reason he doesn't want me looking at it.
That should do it. All the valves, Doctor. Is it working? Just bear with me a moment. Yes, I believe you've got it sorted. It's working again. Nicely done. That sounds like trouble. I don't think they're happy with our success. <laughs> Sighted in now. I still have no idea what I'm looking at, but it's very strange, very strange indeed. Oh, where are my manners? Please, come on up. I'm sorry, I was distracted. what it is yet, let alone where it's coming from, but it's interacting with our system somehow, like it was intended for us, but I don't understand how that could be. Maybe that's just how the story goes. What? Never mind. Is there a way I can hear it, or however this is supposed to work? I think the signal is incomplete somehow, but you should be getting a printout of it now. What do you mean it's incomplete? It's almost as if we're only getting a fragment of it. I need the whole thing. This is important. I'm sure it is, but this is all we're getting. Did the man who looks like me get the whole thing? He locked me out of the booth, so I have no way of knowing. But I can tell you that he didn't really seem to understand it. So, what's in the sky? It doesn't make any sense. The stars are just... they're wrong. I thought I'd be able to see something, but it's like I'm looking at a sky that's just... it's not the right sky. 
But that's impossible. I consider myself a rational man, Doctor. But this isn't a thing you can measure or explain. I I've seen impossible things that have taught me just to roll with some punches. It's either that or go insane. I find it disturbing that you sound like you're speaking from ample experience. out of a <coughs> it too is a weapon created by the champion of light in its words stirs a new reality but it is incomplete and yet it provides a road map for the man to follow a course that will lead him to a place where he may confront his enemy drive-in. Once the site of lurid celluloid fantasies, it's now the site of an art exhibition. And yet, it's the search for closure rather than culture that brings the champion of light here. on the brain. I, I think I can help you if I can get the lights on in here. You can't turn the power back on. It's not allowed. You said. So where shouldn't I go so I don't turn the power back on accidentally? It's the big building on the other side of the drive-in, but it's locked. Where's the key? Just so that I know to avoid it. It's... It's on the wall, next to the cash register. But you can't. You can't. Don't be bad. Hey, no problem. I'm just gonna go do some other stuff. Scout's honor. Mm -hmm. Just try to stay calm. I I've seen this kind of thing before. I think you're gonna be okay. Why did I... Why is it so hard to think? I've been touched by darkness. It's... I'm hoping it's not permanent. Remember when you were here before, and you kissed me, and then everything got all dark? That was the best. Listen, this is very important. Where did he... I mean, where did I go? Can you tell me that? Baby, you don't need to go anywhere. You're here now, and you're in my head. You should be in me. You should touch me again. Not with a ten-foot pole, lady. Hey, just in case there's a part of you in there that's freaking out right now, it's not your fault. I promise I'll do what I can to help you, okay? I... I don't... Please go away. Don't sweat it. I'm just saying that in case you really need to hear it, I've been there. I... I think there are spiders in my eyes. I think you put them in me. Yeah. I'm just gonna go now. So we can go to the side of the building. And we're back with old gods of Asgard and their manager, Barry Wheeler. Guys, you're on your comeback tour, and you're playing a lot of your classic material, but you've also got a new single, right? 
How'd they come about? Was it hard to go back in the studio after such a long time? Are you kidding me? They were chomping at the bit. They were just itching to stretch those creative muscles. Now, it had been a while because, uh, you know, they, they spent a lot of time in, uh... Retirement. We were retired. We were? Yeah. No, 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 no. We were at the lodge and, uh... We escaped. We were at the retirement, uh... Thing. Retirement thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, really, once we got in the studio, things started happening. Now, the music has changed a little bit, and the boys were a little rusty, so it took us a while to find the right gear, but hey, once we got going, oh, boy, they kicked ass, and it's an awesome song. It's called Balance Slays the Demon, and seriously, I think it's their finest work. And hey, I should know, I produced it. Oh, really? I didn't know you were a producer. Well, this is my first time. I mean, they needed a little bit of guidance, you know what I mean? I mean, don't get me wrong, these guys are the best. But it's the 21st century, man. Things just sound a little different these days. So, you know, I kind of stepped in there, helped them make it sound all cool, kind of jazzed it up. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. Oh, no, it was really easy, man. I was just, you know, like, hey, give it a little zing, you know? Let's take it to another level so it really rips. Uh, you know, let's just throw some really sweet synths in. Like that, you know, just kicked it up a notch, but it's totally old gods. Well, listeners, you can judge for yourselves. Here's Old Gods of Asgard, and Balance Slays the Demon. Oh, yeah. Deep in the ocean of darkness, in the mirror of light, Balance. The man has encountered this before. People whose integrity has been suborned by the insidious touch of the darkness. He has experienced it himself, but merciful light burned away the darkness in his brain. My rider's block got worse. I didn't sleep much anymore. My life with Alice seemed like a constant fight. I was a wreck. Alice took steps. She booked a vacation in Bright Falls, a small town in Washington. It was supposed to be a chance to break out of the cycle I was in. She didn't know about the darkness in Cauldron Lake. Interesting. The car seemed to sail through the crisp mountain air in slow motion, spinning around one axis almost lazily. The moment was hypnotic. Then it struck the pipeline in a shower of sparks, the impact turning the windshield into a burst of safety glass. As it hit the ground, I snapped out of my reverie. The car was rolling downhill, slowing down as every bump killed momentum but still coming. 
the fence wouldn't be enough to stop it. Oh, look! Mr. Hero's here! You ready to save the day? It's been two years since I came here. Being that long without Alice breaks my heart, and I know it broke hers. I know she thinks I'm dead. How could I blame her for that? It would be a crime to pretend that she owes me anything. She took all the stupid, self-indulgent bullshit I brought into her life and still stood by me, still loved me. It's no betrayal, but I'm a better person now than I used to be. I want to be that person with her. You're gonna shit yourself when you realize what I've done. Shut up!
Alice, my wife. <laughs> the best thing that ever happened to me. She smiles and the darkness lifts. For her, I've tried things I otherwise never would. I've never really minded if it's made me feel like a fool. She's a photographer, and the world she sees through her lenses is unique and beautiful. She has the vision. She sees things others don't and knows how to make them visible to everybody. She did it with me, too. She teased out things I was only vaguely aware of. She always saw me in the best possible light. Okay, I should be able to figure this out. No idea how badly you're screwed. It's gonna be a blast to watch you find out. Don't wanna get hit by those. Ah!
It's not... It's you. Did... Did you help me? Looks like you're feeling better now. Yes, I am. Thank you so much. I don't know what happened. There was... this guy. Before you say anything, I know I look like him, but I'm not. Don't worry. You just don't feel anything like he does. It's in my head. I feel like I need to take 50 showers. Where is he? That asshole wanted to get into the projector booth. He was talking about fixing things so the sun never comes up. God, it didn't seem that weird when he was saying it. It sounded really good at the time. You weren't yourself. Projector booth. That sounds about right. I need to get in there. I have the access code for the door. Here. Thanks. I'm just glad you showed up now. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely nothing. Arranged for some security. <coughs> you feel up so which means I can be able to access the booth. Or just a handful of air. To open tomorrow. I'm the curator. My name's Serena Valdivia. Alan Wake. Holy shit! It is you. I didn't. I mean, I've seen you on the big screen. I. I know you're white. You know Alice? Wait. Big screen. Yeah, we have a film from her here. What the hell happened to you? I'm getting back to Alice. Oh God, yeah. Sorry. Uh, it's quite a coincidence that you're here. She made this short film. I mean, she shot it years ago. You're in it. It's a part of the exhibition. I'm in a film? Yeah, it's like... I mean, it's just footage she shot of you at some point. But she turned it into this... thing. It's, a uh, Almost like a memorial of sorts. Because, you know, you're supposed to be dead. Or... something. Uh-huh. How's Alice? Is she alright? She's... Okay, I guess, all things considered. I know her pretty well. You're really Alan? I can't believe you're here. Nobody knows what happened to you. But there are people who say they've seen you. That wasn't me. It just looks the same. Like, you know. Yeah, but that guy's a lot more slimy. The thought of him makes me... I hate him, but I... There's something about him, this... God, he's so creepy. Anyway, you're not like him. At all. I hope you can stop it. System? I guess it was too much to hope for an alarm and a fat rent. to tell him what's going on here? We have an art exhibition here, supposed to open tomorrow. I'm the curator. My name's Serena Valdivia. I, I don't need to rehear oh, this. Holy shit, it is you. System? I guess it was too much to hope for an alarm and a fat rent.
<clears throat> That's two. Takes care of that. The champion of light can feel the fragment of the signal in his pocket, the weapon that can change what will be. It's incomplete, but it's all he has. It was late at night, the summer was almost over. Something, haven't you? Too bad it's not gonna do any good. I'm a better you than you ever will be, and I've got all the time in the world. Everything you've got is going to be mine. Your life, your wife. <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? The sun's never coming up now. I can keep this up forever. Show yourself. is unstoppable. Time itself twists and tears, sweeping the champion of light back with its dark currents. Again he enters the world, but now he sees the trap for what it is, a maze that loops back into itself. I'm, I'm here again. Back. In Bright Falls, I was constantly under attack by birds that were more shadow than flesh and feathers. But this is an evolution. Some of the Taken were actually capable of turning into a flock of birds to escape my attacks and turning back into human form to make surprise attacks.
trapped in the darkness. He has started appearing to me. Mr. Sk he can travel back into the world effortlessly, and he loves to rub my face in it. At first, he was just an echo in the darkness, a flicker beyond the edge of my vision. Now he started showing himself, getting bolder all the time, telling me what a great time he's having in the world while I'm stuck here, and what he plans to do, especially to Alice. All the moves I have left are dangerous and desperate. I have no choice. I have to hunt him. I don't make friends easily. I know plenty of people, but I don't let most of them close. I've known Barry Wheeler ever since we were little boys. We had the time of our lives. I'd get us in trouble, and he'd talk us out of it. Things haven't changed that much now that we're grown-ups. He's the most loyal and dependable person I've ever met, and all the things that count anyway. You could call him a weasel, and you wouldn't be entirely wrong. You could call him a clown, and I would reluctantly agree. But he has never let me down. Alright, I think that is going to do it. Alright, that's going to be for this session here. Thank you to those who watch. I will see you all next time.